Welcome to Mob Talk. I'm Dave Schratweiser. And I'm George Anastasia. George, a Lucchese big shot once out of prison and a new trial. The head of the Pagans is about to leave jail, a Jersey federal prison. And what is the Philly mob up to at the Jersey Shore? Jersey Shore is not what it used to be, at least for the wise guys. Yeah, we'll see. All right, George, interesting motion filed in a case involving Martin Tassetta that goes back years and years and years. He's in prison trying to get out. He wants a new trial. Very interesting case. 1991 case, and the, really the origins of all of this from the defense perspective is a 1986 case yes. up in Newark. Yeah. Fascinating case. So this is all about the Lucchese crime family in New Jersey, a, a wing of the, I remember uh, the Arco testified about it. He said, it's a saga. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you're talking about the Tassetta brothers. You're talking about Tumac Asatura, Tommy Riccardi. All of those names figure in both of those cases. And yeah. it's fascinating. We'll see how it plays out. Now, they don't have big power with the New York guys, but they run Jersey. And this was all over Joker poker machines, at least the racketeering part of right. it, and a murder. Yeah, it was uh, Vincent Crapparata, Jimmy Sinatra. He was beaten with, to death by a couple guys, with supposedly with golf clubs. The testimony was, we didn't use bats because bats break, but golf clubs yes. don't. Very, very strange. And and that is in that is in dispute now. I mean, basically what this appeal is saying is, the government got it all wrong. All right. And they're saying they got it all wrong because they were on a vendetta because they had lost that 86 case. Yeah. The 86 case, Bob Rudolph, the reporter from the Star Ledger, wrote a book called The Boys from New Jersey. Excellent book. Uh, 21 month case, 14 hours deliberation, all acquitted. Longest trial in yeah. U.S. history. Am yeah. I right about that? Yeah. Federal? And, and 14 hour deliberations. Jackie DeNorcio was uh, a, a Bruno guy who was part of that. Was that a 20 some defendant? Yeah. He defended himself and was doing like stand up comedy routines yeah. in court. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. And Rudolph wrote the book, and then Sidney LeMay did a movie called Find Me Guilty. Vin Diesel played DeNorcio. So yeah. Yeah. all of that was kind of a black eye for the feds. And in this appeal, they're alleging. They wanted to get back at this faction of the Lucchese family, and they basically trumped up these charges, played fast and loose with the information, and won. Uh, now, these were state New Jersey state charges, right. correct? Not right. the feds this, the second right. time around. Right. And it, this has retribution written yeah. all over it, if you believe the brief. And it's interestingly, it's written by Stephen Duke, who is at Yale University and being handled by Marco LaRocca, a very big uh, mob attorney right. up in North Jersey. I don't mean he just represents the mob, but he represents a lot yeah. of people. Very good defense attorney. So, and, they, and they, you know, they go after Leonetti, they go after Asatura, who becomes a cooperator after he's convicted, they go after Diarco, they go after Tommy Riccardi, basically saying these guys either said what the feds wanted them to say or framed their testimony to fit the version of events as it played out. And then there, is do there are documents that refute that that were never turned over to the defense. One Very of them is dental records that I guess to set a claim he was at the dentist yeah. when some of this stuff yeah. took place. and. It looks like, at they, least from they, the exhibits, that they fudged the dates. They, they kind of fudged the dates on it, and apparently they didn't get those records yeah. in the first yeah. trial. Then there's the whole thing about Philip Leonetti. Philip testified at the trial, right? Uh, the second trial about they, the motive, why this was done, yeah. right? All that kind of stuff. But then up pops an FBI 302 where he says something, according to the filing, completely different. Yeah, the defense says that, that the real two refutes his testimony, should have been turned over to them prior to trial so they could have challenged him when he was up on the witness stand. Yeah. It's, I mean, and it's and a it very, wasn't, it was it not. Was, yeah, no. it's a very, very layered case and it goes back, you know, it's part of New Jersey mob history, really. Yeah. And here's here's Martin Tassetta trying to get out. I, You know, I covered that trial. I was going to say you covered it, so give yeah, us a little color. I covered here. the trial in Tom's River and I remember, it was, it was fascinating, I'm having lunch in, in a deli somewhere and Tassetta's there. He's by himself and he doesn't know me. He comes up, he thinks I'm law enforcement, not. He yeah. sits down, we're talking. And you know, I'm talking to him about it. he had beaten that case in Newark. Now he's got this case, there's other investigations. And he looks at me and he says, it's like Willie Loman says, it comes with the territory. Here's a wise guy quoting death of a salesman. Never, yeah. Yeah. never imagined that at all. Yeah. He, was, he was a fascinating guy. And, yeah. and that case in Tom's River, I, I think, was the beginning of the end for that faction of the mob. As I said, yeah. Asatura became a cooperator after he was convicted. Correct. I that. was in the Attorney General's office yeah. when, as a director of communications big, when he flipped. Yeah, big, big turnover because he was a major player. Yeah. Uh, I think Riccardi cooperated after that. Yeah. And the Tessettas were buried. Yeah. And let's talk about the, uh, Martin Tessetta. Uh, at, at the time, if I understand correctly, He's like the number three guy. It's Asaturo, Michael Tassetta, and then he's like the consigliere. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, uh, he, he's of, not a cop. Of that, of yeah, that of just the faction yeah, in right. Jersey. They do not have standing with the New York guys. Right. New York is New York. These guys are in Jersey. Yeah. 
they kind of get along. There was a dispute, actually, I think, between them and the guys down here about this Joker Poker stuff. And the Lucchese's from Jersey won that dispute yeah. and kept right. the, the Joker Poker situation. Right. Yeah, that's part of that. And there were also testimony that at one point the New York guys wanted to wipe out the entire Lucchese faction here in Jersey. Yeah. They were so out of control you couldn't control them. Yeah. So it was a very crazy, bizarre time in terms of the Jersey underworld. And, you know, a lot of that stuff is folklore almost. I think the Soprano people picked up on some of that when they when they did the scripts for yeah. uh, the television series. And uh, if I understand correctly from the lawyers, now what it looks like is they're going to go for oral arguments. And I, I guess it's kind of a scheduling meeting. Mm. It's in mid-September. They're hoping to do oral arguments and maybe get this issue ha happening, a new trial for it to set us so we can get out of prison. He's still in prison. Yeah. I forget how old he is now, but he's up there. Right. And if not, they want a full-blown hearing with witnesses and documents and the whole nine yards. That'll be a circus. That will and, be and you'll wild. probably want to go cover that Yeah, again. that will be wild. And, and yeah. I'll come out of retirement to go up there. I'd like to see that. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll join you. Okay. And we can have lunch at that deli you talked about. There you about. go. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. it, it's a fascinating case. And it's, you know, after all these years, it, it, there's still repercussions. Yeah. And, and it's just, uh, you think about it, 86. 80, yeah. We're in 2023. Yeah. yeah. 37 years, that's a right. long time. It certainly is. You know, and it's still hanging on. But it's, it was always a black guy for the Fed. They lost that case. They couldn't believe it. And it, it was a real circus, that 86 yeah. trial. Yeah. <laughs> George, let's talk about one of our favorites, the national president of the Pagan's Mother Club, Keith Richter, who's been in jail on some gun charges at Fort Dix. Coming home. In South Jersey, gets out August 10th. Yeah. And that was the case, if you remember, there was a some kind of meeting or affair in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And he's driving back to New York and he gets stopped in New Jersey and they find a weapon in a car. And the all indications were that somebody was tipped off there. Why would you stop him then? Yeah. But you know, he's paid a significant price for that. In addition to the time in jail, I think he's got three years supervised release. Yeah. That. So this is going to be a tricky situation when he comes out. There was somebody who kind of elevated to president when he first went into right. prison. Haven't heard a lot from that individual, but he's been showing up at different Pagans yeah. meetings from guys I know who follow the Pagans uh, and, and know a little bit about what they do and all that kind of thing. But there is a lot of speculation about whether he's going to, again, take the reins. But that's severely restricted by those three exactly, years of supervisor. Exactly. Release. It would be difficult, I think, for him to, to play a major upfront role right now, given yeah. the, uh, the three year supervised release. And George, explain uh, supervised release for people who don't know what that is yeah, when you get be, out of prison. Yeah, it used to be called parole. I mean, it's yeah. you're, you're on. Uh, you're released from prison, but you still have to report to your uh, federal officer, and they, you're not allowed to associate with anybody with yeah. a criminal record. Okay. And for these guys in the underworld, wise guys, bikers, uh, who do they have? It'd be with? hard to yeah. go to a place with the pagans and not yeah. have a felon there. Exactly. You know, and, and so you can be sent back to prison. So you got to you got to tap dance around all of that. Yeah. It's going to be difficult for him. You know, it can certainly be behind the scenes, and, and yeah. it really depends, I think, on how strong influence he has with the organization. And everything we know is he has strong influence. Yeah, yeah. But he'll have to be behind the scenes, yeah. uh, running things from, you know, behind the curtain kind of thing. Yeah, now he's a Long Island guy, uh, has some businesses and stuff out there. He did 16 years in prison before yeah. this whole thing. I'm sure he doesn't want to go back yet again. But he was in the middle of this whole blue wave thing, they called, which was the expansion of the Pagans right. up and down the East Coast, Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, yeah. Maryland, Virginia, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, he was at the forefront of pushing that through. Yeah, yeah and, I mean, and he was, he was, for want of a better word, he was a leader. I mean, like him, not like him, whatever, you know, his, his criminality. He was a guy kind of charismatic who had a following. And the question is, you know, I don't know him. So mentally, can he step back and say, okay, I'm yeah. gonna be a behind the scenes guy till the supervisor release thing is over and I can get out there yeah. out and about again. We'll see. And if you've seen the pictures that we have of him, he's an imposing figure. Yes, absolutely. Big dude, yeah. he wears the things on his forearm. Yeah. He's got the patches and everything yeah. from the pagans. Yeah. I mean, you see the guy or the guy walks into your place, yeah. immediately fear struck in your heart. Yeah, these guys that are, kind of figure. These yeah. guys are the real outlaws. Yeah. Like those are the real outlaws. The one percenters. Yeah, yeah. And, and they take pride in that. And, and he epitomizes all of that. Yeah. I'm just curious to see now how he's going to handle it. Can he step back? You know, he doesn't appear to me, never met the guy or anything like that, from, but from what I know from law enforcement and guys that have been yeah. around him and stuff like that, he's not a step back kind of guy. He's a kind of lead from the front kind of guy. But you know that the, the feds are going to be watching him, so yeah. he's, he's got to be aware of that, and yeah. he's going to have to do that if he wants to stay out. And they waited till he crossed into Jersey it, from yeah. that Pennsylvania right. party with the gun exactly. to pop him. 
Exactly. Because they wanted to get him here in New Jersey, yeah. and they got him. Yeah. And he went. He pled guilty up in federal court. Mm -hmm. He got 33 months mm -hmm. and a three-year supervised release. That went fast. He's getting out in August. The supervised release is the key going forward, and we'll see how he handles that. All right, George, we're in the heart of the summer now. July, it's hot, it's shore time. Everybody loves to go to the shore, but a lot of guys can't go to the shore because they're in prison from the Philly mob. And it seems to have really gone low key down there. No, every, everything has. It, it's, I think, a couple of factors. One is, what you mentioned guys are away. The other thing is, memories isn't there anymore. Right. And that was kind of the full Jerry, blabbing at the focal point around which everything kind of revolved. Yeah. And I don't think it's just the wise guys. I think the whole oh, yeah. market area has been impacted from that. Everybody's waiting to see uh, what happens next. What yeah. do we do about it that? It was open for a couple of days. Yeah. I think they have to do that to keep their liquor license viable, that kind of thing. There was some talk that it was going to be sold, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but that is the place to go. Yeah. And now I guess they're fanning out to other places, stuff like that. But everybody's wondering ab about that. And that was the place where you'd see guys coming and going. Yeah, yeah, that in the greenhouse and a couple other places. But, yeah. you know, the, the other thing is what we've talked about several times on the show already is things are just, just not a lot of activity. Yeah. Not a lot of money being made. Guys are going to the shore because they like the shore. Right. But th th in terms of socializing and, and for whatever degree actual business was conducted down there, it's yeah. not being conducted. And yeah. that's a reflection, I think, of the overall situation with the Philly Mob. Things are really, really down low, absolutely. Low and case. just like us, they're putting a few years on them, they have some experience. They don't want to get messed around yeah. with all that kind of yeah. stuff anymore. These guys don't want to yeah. go back to jail. Stephen Mazzone is in jail, Dominic Randy is in jail, Sonny, Sonny Mazzone is yeah. in jail, a couple of other, Joe Servideo, a few other guys, yeah. stuff like that. So they're not going to be at the shore. They weren't last summer either because they were on house arrest. But the usual activity down there just seems to have gone by the wayside. Yeah, and, and Joey's in and out, but Joey doesn't seem to have the fanfare around him that he's had in past summers. And yeah. that, you know, that's, maybe that's because of some personal situations. But, yeah. you know, <clears throat> Joey is also the catalyst around which everything revolves. Yeah, and he spent some time, obviously, recently in and out of Philadelphia. Right. I have heard he plans on coming down and going to the shore yeah. for a little bit. He usually does for two or three weeks, yeah. sometimes a month in August that's usually when he comes down it's hot in Florida where he lives it's like 110 yeah. the other day with the heat factor so you know I could see him coming down will that stir the pot a little bit yeah I think a little bit but I, I don't think there's anything big going on in that yeah. situation exactly I don't think anybody's making any serious money yeah so what's it all about you know that's where we are right now well wish him the best for the summer whatever have fun All right, George, let's wrap this up. 6ABC did a piece the other day, unsolved case, the Rocco Maniscalco hit in South Philly on Wolf Street. Stirred the pot a little bit. Yeah, that was a case that brought a, a lot of theories. Nothing's ever come of it. Organized crime, uh, African-American organized crime, drug dealing. We don't know. It just sits out there. Well, I think the family wants that case solved. There's a $20,000 reward, so if you have information, feel free to call the police.